Okay, everybody, hello. I um, hope you're all doing well. I'm a bit nervous to do this post because, well, I guess I haven't been um, as excited for this one. It's a good one. It's definitely one that comes with conviction for me. And I have just not been feeling good to make any videos. So I hope that you will um, bear with me just a bit. I know last time I talked about Mark chapter 15, I was going to go into a very long word. So get ready. Conviction coming. All right. So this is called, um, this is a warning to all of you. Please, if you're a snowflake, just don't click on it. Um, and I want to talk to you all about this hard time. I made a video before about, um, why it's hard to ask for help and a lot of people are waiting for you to trip up but what happens in the time of pain what happens in the time where things are hard because we're all getting confused right because god is good so why am i going through a hard time or things aren't right or if this god is of bail then what kind of god you know I'm trying to build my business, but things are hard. So I'm going to read chapter four of Mark. And again, this is from the Gideon's version. I'm going to read the entire fourth chapter. And he began to preach. He began to teach beside the sea. And a very large crowd gathered about him so that he got into the boat and sat in it on the sea and the whole crowd was beside the sea and on the land he was teaching them many things in parables and in his teaching he said to them listen behold the sower went out to sow and as he sowed some seed fell along the path and the birds came and devoured it the other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil and immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables and he said to them to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of god but those for those outside everything is in parables so that they may indeed see but not perceive and may indeed hear but not understand lest they should turn and be forgiven and he said to them how do you not understand this parable how will you then will you understand all the parables the sower sows the word and these are the mong, are the ones along the path where the word is sown when they hear satan immediately comes up and takes away the word that is sown in them and these are the ones who sown on rocky ground those ones who when they hear the word immediately receive it with joy and then they have no root in themselves and they endure for a while and then the tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word immediately they fall away and others are the ones sown among thorns are those who hear the word but the cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches and desires of for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful but those that were sown on good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said to them, is a lamp in to be put under a basket or under a bed and not on a stand? For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear with the measure you use. It will be measured to you and still more will be added to you. For the one who has more will be given. And for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. 
And he said, the kingdom of God is as a man should scatter a seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and he seeds sprouts and grows, and he does not know how. The earth produces itself. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in a sickle because of the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it's sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to him, and then they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without parable, but privately in his own disciples, he explained everything. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took with him with them in the boat just as he was and the other boats with him and there was a great windstorm that arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so the boat was already filling but he was on the stern asleep in the cushion and woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we're perishing and he woke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said to them why are you so afraid have you still no faith and they were filled with great fear and said to one another who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him okay so the message <sighs> so you guys um the best way i can say this is the fact that i've had my own uh, quite a few many challenges recently okay and I've been making some of this um, known and not known to a lot of you now the first thing I want to discuss with you is the idea of faith so faith is knowing God will okay and um, when we look at scripture and just from mark chapter 4 i was so convicted when i had gone through this because how many times are people scrolling through different like feeds in their youtube and that's oh this prophetic word oh that prophetic word and it feels really good but it hurts they'll even and i'm i hate to even say that these are like the, the, but this is true these are false prophetic words okay they're like talking about this oh uh, and that's going to happen for you. But these are coming from false wolves in sheep's clothing. But even when somebody's praying for you and they're sowing something and you're like, yes, you know, um, if God clothes all the lily, like the, the birds neither sow nor toil, but God still feeds them, right? If we're still looking at Yah and he's still feeding the birds, then why then would we be uh, any less? God loves us. And the conviction comes from being excited when you get the word and then you're being, you're, you're being put through tribulations, being put through really hard times. Then you're thinking of the worst. You're like, well, maybe I should just do X, Y, or C. Maybe I should call X, Y, or C. And the fact that I would get excited in a moment and then see that there's, on account of the word, it's not just, okay, it's just a hard time in general. Um, that's kind of the hard part is in this same chapter of Mark, we're seeing that what I highlighted oh so much in my, my personal consecration time, I don't even know if anyone can for real see how that what's been highlighted just because of the oh wow the marker is not that thick but what I highlighted um, was the trial in Mark uh, 437 so there was a windstorm that happened and when I think about the timing of God and everybody says God is good but when we think of suffering we always talk about Job you know I was washing my hands today and I thought wow 
when we are thinking about the goodness of God, we wonder why we have to go through trials if God is good, then why are, are, are we sometimes going through rocky terrain? When I think about the story of Moses, why is it that Moses was ready to sacrifice his son and he told the person, the guard, oh, we'll be right back down. Now, I didn't know if he had actually meant that, like, hey, we'll really be back. Or if he was like, I just remember thinking, wow, that's interesting. Somebody else pointed out that he was speaking in faith because he knew God would provide something to, to be sacrificed. But he was ready to sacrifice his son. But how about he was literally had the knife to the kid's throat ready to sacrifice his own son and then God brought a lamb. Why is it that these the disciples are in a windstorm moving the boat and all of a sudden the waves are already coming up on shore and then all of a sudden it stops? The timing of God is always it's so very last minute. And when I think and reflect about my own life, like the windstorms keep going, just like this boat was getting all this water and coming on and on. And then it's not until it starts getting rocky. You're like, okay, God, like what is happening? And then I just think of what is said in Mark 4, 40. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? So when we look at a lot of other people who are have made it who are successful people who have said oh my gosh like I made it from zero to a hundred I had twenty dollars and I started my Airbnb business um, or I trusted God and I quit my job and started my ministry full-time and this is what happened this is for real you guys I just talked to you about um, my jobs and needing to take a rest and now being released well those jobs are gone and it's a very scary place to trust again. And I know sometimes even in my own life, as I look back where God has not failed me, uh, it, it doesn't mean that there weren't times where it was rocky. Like it was such a scary, turbulent time, but worked out at the very last second, even from the last video that I made of my experience in December like this was such a terrifying, uh, heart palpitating uh, place for me to exist that I was still operating on faith. And so I wanna share that with you. Um, it's the fear that we have, the things that we're going through, it's not just that you receive a word and you're like, okay, and then all of a sudden you're being, you hit a bunch of trials and tribulations. Well, if God loves us, why are we being tested? If he loves us, why would he ask us to kill our own son? Um, a lot of this is not just God is good. God is good because you go through hard times. And there was somebody I'd spoken to, he was an old personal trainer, and he said he didn't believe that God puts us through hard times, nor does he give us tests. He is just good. Um, and so if something bad happens, it must be Satan. Well, I have to say, I've been going through my own journey, trying to kind of repatch, figure out, you know, get things together on my own might. And when I was fasting, I was told that uh, you got to stop. And actually, I'm the one who's doing this. I'm the one who's not, who's causing everything to kind of pause right now. And I'm like, okay, this is faith. But I felt so convicted almost to the point where I was like, not almost, I repented this morning, choked up like, Lord, I am so sorry. Forgive me for my unbelief on my face, repenting. So the cares of the world and deceitfulness and riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful yo that was just like that chokes me up right now because i was also reminded you know this past two weeks that um 
we are not of the world you are not of the world so things are not gonna work out anyway this is not your home you're not of the this isn't your home you don't even belong here so why would you have all this stuff if you don't belong here people are going to treat you like you don't belong here you're going to go through all kinds of stuff but then i keep hearing as i was even doing laundry today um, there's a lot of rooms in my father's house and I prepared one for you if it was not so would I have not said it to you now I'm paraphrasing um, but when I listen to scripture every time I go to sleep uh, as I'm playing it in my sleep or in the background really soft these are some of the promises and it's very hard uh, to live in this world and not have the cares of it let's just be honest you know things are hard you know it's you're dealing with the cares of the world now it's not easy for me to be this transparent but leaving those two jobs one was just not I had prayed about this for months I said I don't really want to do this job however I do not believe that it's wise to just up and quit because I had applied for almost 400 500 jobs and I only heard back from two that made sense so I said well since I got started you know it was okay for a minute and then it started getting weirder and weirder um, just because of wanting to speak out for trans youth I mean sh kids shouldn't even be worried about that stuff and then saying things for the ACLU like a woman has a right to an abortion I said oh my god I I would read this I would look at the script and I would be like oh my god Lord I'm so angry I want to quit but like can you open another door for me because I don't want to be where I was before and I'm really trying to build something in this business because I can't work for another person and it was just breaking me and so I it still took me a while to recover again um, just kind of having a brain that's on the spectrum uh, needing a lot of time to recover had really taken so much out of me I was in so much cognitive uh, distress and cognitive the cognitive cost of working so long for those for several months with not much sleep and not having any rest is already a lot but when your brain is a little different it the cost was too much so I was I was dealing with a lot of executive dysfunction um, even now I, f I feel like the my, my speech is <laughs> um, having this um, speak a little slower than I usually would because the my brain is just in um, recovery mode and so the last two weeks I have done a lot trying to reach out and I recognize oh man that you know the Lord just closed this door Yah is not allowing something to happen and then I look at the last message that I wrote in my prayer journal and it was get rest and I thought it was the time I was at the penthouse. Okay, I got my rest, seven days, time to go. And it just was not enough. I was still very tired. And so um, even from socializing and things, I'm just kind of told to back off a bit. We're in very strange times, guys. Sometimes we don't know um, in the moment whether it, of course, everything is all God's doing. Um, to work out for us but it's sometimes in the moment we just don't know what it is what's going on so I had been looking for jobs almost every day for um, the past two weeks since I've been in this Airbnb and it's been very hard I'd get a few or interviews but then it we just it was not a fit or promises for interviews and yeah yeah we'll call you tomorrow and not get the call even if I'm calling them every day yeah yeah we'll call you in, f in a few minutes okay it's been six hours everything good yeah yeah we have an inner so I'm like what's happening but before I could get caught up in depression or what the enemy was saying or trying to taunt me into something and look at this you still got to pay for that you got to pay for this I thought okay 
well, nothing happens unless my father allows it to. And when I was in, um, yesterday, I went to a sauna and I remembered a word that somebody said to me and I broke down crying in the sauna. And, um, just because I had not had a, necessarily a father figure that like I was a favorite, it just, I was like, not liked, <laughs> loved, love you, but really don't like you and it was it was hard to even conceptualize that this is something that my father would do I I just remember feeling uh very sad and feeling like not forsaken but a bit not I did let's be honest I felt forsaken this was sometime in November looking for multiple jobs trying to find one one would work for two days a day it just wasn't working like what's happening god why are you forsaking me right now what are you teaching me and i had let i had left this other job that i had that was just kind of like taking care of my daily needs um just so i could you know have gym memberships and and do things like that but not touch the money that i had saved and then all of it had gone just like something happened and this needed to be done that need to be listened and next thing I look up and like oh crap everything is gone like no money saved nothing and it was almost an attack it was uh of my consciousness of my peace of mind and god why are you forsaking me like everyone I've called the prayer line six times a day have an anxiety attack please can you help me please please pray for me please and sometimes being very frustrated because when when I pray, I, I was so worried about uh, like it was almost gone amongst thorns or just being tested so much. I was wrapped in the cares of the world and the, and the deceitfulness of desires of other things the desire to just have a place to stay like <laughs> that it wasn't so much like oh let me get a louis bag oh lord like all what comes to mind is janice joplin oh lord won't you buy me a mercedes benz my friends all drive porsches i'm trying to make amends worked hard all my lifetime no help from my friend so lord won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Oh Lord, won't you buy me a colored TV? Right, like that kind of deceitfulness. I don't think I was necessarily in that, but I had been in survival mode because something happened and all my money just went away. And that was very scary I'm telling you when your legs get kicked out from under you and like almost having that promise I'm going to do this I'm gonna take care of myself now this has got to happen and then all this trauma starts coming up like well I wish I had the education uh, the like financial literacy why didn't why didn't somebody teach me the financial literacy why why didn't they teach me about certain things that being very like angry about it and all kinds of traumas coming up and feeling like well if I had this part that was healed so this was like me kind of coming into understanding a lot of my father who is in heaven how it be thy name okay and so just understanding that because I don't I did not have a good situation at home you guys can look back at a lot of these videos before of connection but not uh, relationship and you can see a lot of the traumatic things that have happened or being blamed for something that you know you shouldn't blame anyone for and just feeling that there was no resolution feeling that um, you know I had to do a lot just to get acknowledgement or just not being liked at all and then again being gossiped or uh, scapegoated about it was a very hard time just feeling like I should stay away and I can't win anyways it was a very hard time to really learn how to come into a love of my father and understand really more of what the kingdom of God is 
Uh, shout out to Eric. Um, a lot of these uh, messages have come along my path. And so I want you all to just remember that this here that I'm reading in chapter 4, verse 11 in Mark. To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. So everyone outside won't understand. They'll hear, but they won't understand. But you will understand. The kingdom of God is that you will have parables. You want to be able to pay attention to what you hear. With the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. Operating in faith is this big one. And I was not expecting to be talking for all this time. <laughs> but it, it is a very hard and scary place. So here I have to just openly declare that I'm completely trusting God. It, usually I like to make videos after it's been in the situation and not tell you while it's happening. Like, okay, I'm trusting God. This is a situation and um, I think sometimes the hardest part is when people brag about what they have or are doing without really giving consideration to where you are in your life. And um, I think that's what hurts sometimes or even bigger that like this person could help. Or are they just not obedient or is God holding this back? Um, so... I had, uh, I don't know if I told you guys this, but somebody in my past that I had met in Phoenix, she was, she mentioned that she didn't like how I was talking about the gospel. And once I reached out to her when I was in trouble and she didn't like that. And so I, I said, okay, in this time, I'm just going to keep quiet. I'm not telling anybody I'm in trouble just you know people don't want to hear about it anyways and so sometimes you may not be happy with people's responses and even in that and just people's responses I also wanted to add a caveat or just kind of add on to what I was talking about in uh, why you don't want to ask for help so um which was now just a fleeting thought. <laughs> Bring it back, Holy Spirit. So it's just been um, when we want to ask for some kind of help, and people don't think you, Holy Spirit. You don't get um, you don't get the response you need. Well, you'll figure it out. You got this. It's like okay. I remember there was a time where I was getting ready to go and um, I prayed about this for a while and I just felt I shouldn't do it, but let me not act like I don't have faith. It was a very different feeling than now. And um, I traveled across Texas and every door shut. I mean, every door. I'm like, why is this happening? people that I was uh were coming into my ministry were pouring into everybody else and I'm like well should I really be doing this like even should my deliver the deliverance ministry that I have should that even like is that of you and just feeling quite doubtful and so this is what I've learned just kind of uh, <laughs> just because a lot of times the responses is not going to be something that is good I think it's important to speak our heart, but as I kept learning in, especially in this fast, if you need to say anything to me, I need you to just tell me what my word is. This is actual prayer. I think, um, and not to be so hard on myself to like say, well, you shouldn't pray unless you can just like read scripture. I have sat, lighted, read, written, written on the tablet of my my mind and my heart but the thing is not every single uh scripture that i've read has been um one that i remember and so when i was fasting i was told okay just remember this scripture now i think god um i know that my father does check 
the heart of us and he will he definitely supports but i i was seeing that a lot of things were cut out from under me including a prayer line and some of the support places i had gone i was getting so frustrated with the people on the prayer line god i don't know this person but you do okay obviously i didn't call you because she was my best friend i need somebody to pray with me but they would just repeat back what i said even though my father's already present as opposed to affirming things right so <laughs> not repeating scripture and it's okay to have a relationship with god and not know the word but there's a time where you have to start eating meat i mean there has to be a time if this is you know you have to start eating meat and i think it's good that people can volunteer and pray for other people it's just important that you read your word i mean what else can we say to God besides tears and thank you, right? So there has to be other things that we're gonna read back to our father so he can, we can remind him of what he said. I was in a very hard place. Like honestly, when I rested, it was almost three days of not being able to get out of bed. I had slept for maybe 15 hours 16 hours at a time and I would get up and I would try to do a little bit of work and I just would fall back because I did not have the capacity so and also dealing with rejection every day it kind of hurts like there was no success scene so I, I wanted to give you all this message to encourage you are you kind of going through a a time are you also looking at everybody else's testimony god gave me this or uh granted me the business or had done this that and five other things and it was not healthy uh to see this and then look at yourself and say well what happened are you having the same mentality that i had that well you know i love my father he's just busy with somebody else right now he'll get to me I want to remind you the word uh, that was given to me that broke me down in the shop, in the sauna. You're God's favorite. So don't give up. Don't have you so little faith. Don't have so little faith. Just expect it. And please um, send this to your friends if somebody's going through a hard time. Make sure that whatever word is being sown to you is not going to be on rocky ground that you, it's so happy and then all of a sudden something happens and then it goes down. You want to maintain your posture um, as long as possible in the spirit of Yah. And so I think that's that's a bit all I have. I have a lot more, but it's it was a bit of a rant and a personal story and a lot of that. Um, the last thing I did want to say is when, like, you can put in a journal or something, but there's going to be a level that when you're in this wilderness, um, a very hard, confusing season, like what is happening? Um, when you're in the boat and things are getting rocky, uh, it's been clear that the only way we can turn as we look here in Mark is to our father to jesus say what happened can you help us the thing is the the winds didn't cease until they saw out jesus yahuwah i've been convicted about talking about jesus or god but more yah yahuwah um so this is important that uh, you have to be able, we want to be able to sh cry out and, and say, Dad, what happened? I'll see you next time.